greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I also want to welcome all of you that are in the sanctuary of the Lord. And I also want to welcome our viewers, wherever they are, be part of this service, and we thank the Lord for you. Praise the Lord. Our topic tonight, it's a wonderful topic. Because it says the danger of anointing. Many a times we, as human beings, we have a tendency of desiring to be anointed. And I would love to be anointed like so and so. And we have no clue, no idea that there are dangers that come with anointing. Praise the Lord. And there are things that these anointed people or the anointed servants of God go through. Anointing does not come cheap. That is what we need to understand as children of God, that anointing does not come cheap. That is why I have come to a point in my life where I respect every anointed servant of God. Because they are not just anointed just for the fun of it. There is a purpose why God choose and anoint them. And when they are anointed as the servants of God, there are things that you wouldn't want to go through. Because we, we tend to believe that being anointed is, is a wonderful thing. It is not a wonderful thing. Because it comes with dangers. But these dangers that you, you may be assuming right now, it is not, it's not the danger that you may think of, that it means being anointed, then it means there will be people waiting for me to kill me. No. That is not the kind of danger. Though some of those things may happen to an anointed person. And bear in mind, I am saying an anointed person. Praise the Lord. I don't know the anointing that you have. That is why God desires that we, we love and respect one another. Because you don't know what God has deposited in another person. You tend to, to look down upon another person because you think you are the one who is highly anointed. Possibly because some of the people think that when you stand at this place, those are the anointed ones. Seated there, watching from wherever you are watching, there is an anointing upon your life. You just need to know and understand what that anointing is. Praise the Lord. And once you discover that anointing in your life, then you will realize that there is a certain way that God expects you to live and and conduct yourself. Because anointing comes with responsibility. You can never be anointed if you are not a responsible person. You must be responsible. The reason being, when you are anointed, God gives you power. There is power that God gives you. He just doesn't anoint you. But there is power that comes along with it. Power in the sense that an anointed person, whatever the person says, it comes with anointing. Whatever the person speaks, that which the person has said, it comes with anointing. So the responsibility part of it comes where when you know and understand that you are anointed, you don't just speak anyhow. And you don't just conduct yourself anyhow. Because you must understand that whatever I say, it happens. Because of the anointing that I have. There were several times I was reminded of the servant of the, of the Lord in, in the word of God, David. David, there were several times where he was 
haunted, if I may put it like that, by Saul, the king. But as much as David was being chased by Saul and his troops, there is not even a single moment where David, anointed as he was, said, I am also anointed just like you. There is nothing you can do to me. Let's see who is better than you. Let's see who is better between the two of us. David was anointed at the time when God had said he has rejected him, but Saul continued to be the king of Israel. But David never said, I am now the anointed king. There is nothing you can tell me. And there is nothing you can do to me. David respected that. I want us to go to the word of God in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 24. I will start reading from verse number 3 until verse, the first part of verse number 7. In the NLT it says, At that place, at the place where the road passes some sheepfolds, Saul went into a cave to relieve himself. But as it happened, David and his men were hiding further back in that very cave. Now's your opportunity, David's men whispered to him. Today the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with him as you wish. So David crept fo forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. But then David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut Saul's robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord and King. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one, for the Lord himself has chosen him. So David restrained his men and did not let them kill Saul. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Speak, O oh Father, we are listening as your children. In the name of Jesus, this is your word, your anointed word. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is life. My God and my Father, we thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. And this is the word of God. I love this scripture. When I read this scripture, I, I had a picture on my mind. There was Saul. You know when nature calls, it doesn't respect you. It doesn't care who you are. And if there is a place where you can go and relieve yourself, you just go inside and you relieve yourself. Because nature is calling. Praise the Lord. Nature has no respect whether you are anointed or not. So there is Saul. He went inside the cave to relieve himself. That's what the word of God says. He went in there to relieve himself. Now, as he was busy relieving himself, David and his men, the Bible says, they were right there at the back. In a cave, it's dark, you, you won't see. So I can imagine Saul did not see. But Saul's men were right there at the back. And David's men said, now is the time. You can kill him now. God has actually brought him to you so that you do to him as you wish. And... You know, at that moment, I, I can imagine David thinking, for sure, I think this is the time. I think this is God. He brought him to me so that I kill him. The Bible says he went forward. He cut off a piece of his robe. But then David, knowing the anointing and understanding the anointing that God has placed on Saul also and upon himself, the Bible says his conscience began to bother him. He was bothered by his conscience because he remembered the word of God that this is the anointed of God. And the Bible says, touch not the anointed of God. He is anointed. As much as he is persecuting me, and this is an opportunity for me to do what I want to do to him, but I cannot. God forbid that I do that. 
And I was taken to a scripture which made me to really understand that David understood what anointing is. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, the first verse it says, The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for, for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse in Be of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. To be king. And I loved the NLT on that part when it says, I have selected one of his sons to be my king. This is God speaking. I have selected one of his sons to be my king. In other words, he is going to be the king that is going to follow every precept, everything that I will tell him to do. He will be my king. He will lead according to my word. And David says, God forbid that I should touch his anointed. For it is the Lord that has chosen him. David understood that as much as Saul had his own issues, but he was still anointed by God. And I began to ask myself questions. How many times do we, do we ignore servants of the Lord or the anointed ones of God? How many times do we look down upon them? Let alone when God anoints you and you, you feel, yeah, I'm also there now. There is nothing they can do to me. Now I am also anointed. They are going to feel my anointing. David was not like that. David never did that. He understood what anointing is. He understood that it comes with responsibility. That is why I even want to say today, this responsibility that comes with, with, with anointing, that is what makes servants of the Lord mostly to misuse this anointing. Because they know that whatever they say, it happens. And I also want to bring a word of caution. That remember, the evil one also has his own servants. Servants that when they speak also things happen. And people will then be deceived and, and think, this is really anointing. It could be anointing according to the language of the kingdom of darkness. But according to the language of heaven, that is pure darkness. It is not anointing. That is why as children of God, we therefore need to have the spirit of God to be able to discern. You must be able to discern that this is the spirit of God. And this discernment will actually come a long way because it will assist us as children of God. That even when you, you meet a, a prophet and a prophet says, the Lord has said something to me about you. And because we so much love to be prophesied upon, we will stop and want to listen. And many a times I'm reminded of this testimony that this young lady gave. Many a times these prophets, they will tell you exactly what is happening in your life. And you'll say, indeed, God speaks. I have seen God today. God sent his servants to me. They spoke. God has spoken. If you don't have the spirit of God to be able to discern, you will be lost and you'll be deceived. Praise the Lord. So that is the word of caution that I wanted to bring as I speak about anointing and the danger of anointing. As a child of God, anointed as you are, because some people think that when you are anointed, you are immune from challenges of life. And let me tell you something. The anointed ones are the most hunted ones by the evil one. Anointed as they are, they do face difficulties. Praise the Lord. They face difficulties. 
they are being hated left, right, and center. And you'll even think sometimes, why do people hate me so much? You give them love, you show them love, but they hate you. There is something that is in you that is repelling. It's repelling them from getting close to you. That's why they hate you. It's the anointing. And you are wondering, why, why do people hate me so much? Now, the moment you discover that, because some of the people will, will insult you. As a child of God, as an anointed person, they will insult you. Now, the responsibility of the anointing comes when, how then do you respond when you are insulted? What do you say? Do you say whatever you said to me, back to sender? Or you just simplify it and say, Liwena? Because you think you don't want to talk too much. Listen, you need to understand that whatever you say, the danger comes when you say something in anger. When you are angry, because you are a human being, right? When you are angry and you say something, the unfortunate part is it will happen. It may not happen to you, it will happen to this person. And that is the danger of it. God does not want this anointing to work like that. That is where you realize where people are not really anointed by God. When things happen to them or when people say something bad to them, the way they respond, that is what will tell you whether this anointing is from God or not. They don't know me. These people just don't know who I am. I will show them. I will deal with them. I will deal with them. Don't they know that I'm anointed? I'm very anointed. Even the way they work, you, can, you walk, you can see they are anointed indeed. There is anointing that you can see physically that, yeah, indeed there is anointing here. Yeah. I will show them who I am. They will know today that I am anointed. Don't they know that I am the anointed servant of God? The way you respond to those situations will tell us whether indeed you are anointed by God or not. Because there is power in the words that an anointed person says. That is why it is always important that an anointed person will speak words of kindness, words of blessing. You don't care because the moment you do that, it stays. It happens. And that is the danger. Now you cannot say, exactly, Mrut. That is exactly what I want. Now I want to be anointed so that I get so and so. Now I really want to be anointed. For that reason, that attitude of your heart, you will not be anointed because you want to misuse anointing. And if maybe you are here and you know you are anointed, and you are saying, ah, so that's the power that I have. Now they will know me. Now I will show them who I am. I didn't know that I have so much power. That whatever I say it will happen. I will say it tonight. I'm going to say it to them. God is not expecting that. The Bible says, touch not the anointed of God. How many negative words have you spoken to the anointed servants of God? What have you said? Even when they make mistakes, what do you say in your little corner? They think they know better. Just because they are leaders, just because they are anointed. So they think they know better. Some, they even click the tongue. You know how to click the tongue? They then click the tongue. Even when the servant of God is approaching, they will say, oh, oh, and they click. Whatever you say and do to an anointed person, remember this person did not call himself, this person did not choose himself, this person did not anoint himself. 
All these things that you think you are doing to this person, you are not doing to them directly. You are doing them to God. And God, I don't want to say God will deal with you. Because we still want you to talk to the anointed people of God. Praise the Lord. But God tonight wants to teach us responsibility. And that we need to understand that as much as we are here, the anointing that you have is not the anointing that I have. You have an anointing that I need. So I need to respect you. And this brings me to a point where Christ Jesus will always say we must pray for unity. Do you know where this disunity comes from? It comes from people who, who are dissatisfied with their leaders. I could have done better. If only they had chosen me, I was going to show them the skill that I have. And the way that I speak my English is from UK. It's not this gassy English. Well, it depends on who your English teacher was. If you were taught by an English teacher who would say a competition is a competition, ah, why blame me? If I was taught at school that it's competition, then it's competition. You can't, you can't tell me now today that it's not competition, it's competition. To me, it's competition. But you, you get the message. So you can't say, if only they had chosen me, I was going to speak that English. And now that they are even going live, imagine, people were going to see me. People were going to hear me. These, these simple ideas that they have, they are cheap, cheap ideas. And every time you see your leaders, you see these people, you see these anointed people of God, you see things that you, you can't even respect. Because when you know better, you are too learned. I was reminded of a story. A very old man was invited to a graduation in a university, a graduation. There are professors there, learned people there. This old man was not learned. He was just invited to say something. And I will tell you what it is. And the old man did not even know that there was another one that was invited to say the same thing. They were both uh, invited to recite Psalms 23. So this young man comes and he goes with his Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the veil of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your rod and your stuff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the whole crowd went, yeah. They clapped hands. For the English. And the old man came. It's like I can see this old man. He took the microphone. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. As the old man continued, by the time he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me, the whole audience was standing, applauding and crying. The difference was that this old man knew the shepherd. The old man understood 
this shepherd. But the young man knew English without the shepherd. You may have better English, but you need to respect the anointing that is in another person. You may think that, but I don't stand behind the pulpit, but I don't lay hands upon people and they don't roll, no demon scream. There is an anointing that is upon your life. And we need to respect one another because of that anointing. An anointed person will never go around with a black card saying, I am anointed, I am anointed, respect me. They will never do that. But the way they handle themselves, their character, it will tell you there is something about this one. Praise the Lord. David's conscience began to bother him. People are no longer bothered by conscience anymore. There is no more conscience. Anyone is just the same to you. No respect, nothing. How come she does everything? Is she the only one? Oh, we can do a better job than her. We can do a better job. Who thinks they can do a better job? Can, can anyone just raise up their hands and say, no, we can do a better job. Just here and now, we do it, we do it practical. Anyone, anyone who wants to interpret now, you can do a better job. Anyone? According to me, that is the most difficult job to do. It's the most difficult. David knew First Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 22. That is why he quoted it in the word of God in Psalms 105, verse 15. Touch not the anointed of God. Touch not the anointed of God. Most of the time people do wrong and bring harm to servants of God, not knowing what they are doing. That is why Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't know. This harm that they are doing to me and bringing to me, they don't know. There are people who are persecuting servants of God. They take pleasure in persecuting servants of God. To them, to see servants of God in pain, to them it's joy. If they see a servant of God happy, joyous, they are already thinking, what can I bring? What can I do? And as I meditated, I, I began to think that besides the fact that the enemy, who is the devil, Besides the fact that he wants to persecute us because of Jesus Christ. I was convinced that he wants, he is persecuting Christians because of the joy that we have. And the peace that we have. Just before you were, you were born again, you know that time when someone would say something to you. And you begin to laugh. Instead of you being angry. And you begin to laugh. How do you think the other person would feel? Angry. I came, I came to annoy this person. I said whatever I wanted to say. Instead of you being angry. And you burst into laughter. See what will happen to that person. That person will be like a dog when you tell it to go away. You must remember there are people viewing. When you tell the dog to go away, there is something that the dog does. You see a dog has a tail and four legs. So when you tell it, go away, in your language, you tell it to go away, it puts the tail between the legs and it walks away in a certain way. Like, I'm so disappointed. I am so disappointed in you. This is what I wanted to do and you are chasing me away. 
And that's exactly how the devil feels. So when the devil sends his agents to come and bring things to you, there are times you must just burst into laughter. When was the last time you laughed? No, honestly speaking, when was the last time you laughed? Some will say last year. I laughed when, when we were here on the 31st of December, 2016. That was the only time I can remember that I laughed. You need to laugh. There is danger in words people speak. What are you saying? What did you say today? To who? Can you think, can you reverse and think of the words that you spoke today? Those words that you spoke to that person, do you know how anointed that person is? What have you said to the servants of God, even in this house? When you see them, you laugh. Hey, 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 amen, fire, fire, amen. When you turn your back, oh. Because here at home, we have a tendency of, even when people are greeting you, they don't, they don't greet anymore. They say fire. When they see you, they just see demons that they need to fire up. There is no more, I am well, thank you, how are you? There is no more here in this house. You see anyone, maybe he did something this morning so that when he comes to shake my hand, something happens. Fire. I'm not saying it's wrong. But when was the last time you asked your fellow brethren, how is it going? Is it well with you? The Shunammite woman was asked, is it well with you? That is what the anointing will do to you. When you understand that you are not fighting flesh and blood, but principalities. And when you understand that there is no devil that will touch you. The tongue has the power of life and death. I just needed to remind us as brethren. Proverbs 18.21 and if you read that scripture, the Bible says, those who love it, you shall eat the benefits. It depends on what you say with your mouth and how you say it. Can I beseech you by the message of God to start building with your tongue and not breaking? Can you start building someone tonight as from now? Instead of breaking someone with what you say. Can I beseech you to start respecting the anointing that the people of God have. Even if you don't want to respect the person. But respect the anointing that God has placed in that person. He did not ask for it. She did not ask for it. There is no one, if I can ask the servants of God that are here, that did you ask to be anointed? They will all tell you, no, I never wanted to. Including myself. Now, this doesn't mean that anointed people don't make mistakes. This is the part that I love. Anointed people do make mistakes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anointed people do make mistakes. If you know that the servant of God has said something that you did not like, you don't go around the corner. And say, yeah, you see, you see the, way, the way she spoke. I know the next time she's there, she's going to talk about me. Please, we have the word of God to talk about. Not you. If there is a mistake that has happened, a servant of God or an anointed person has said something that you did not like. And if you know that you, you, you boil easily, before you pray and you kindly go to the person and you sit down and you talk. Did you hear what I said? Because I said an anointed person can make a mistake. 
And if that mistake was done to you, you don't go around talking about it. Because the moment you do that, you are bringing a curse upon your life. And that curse will not come from the one that has made a mistake to you. Do you hear me? The danger is in right there. It's right there. This person is not even aware that he made a mistake. When are you know? But instead of going to the person, anointed as they are, men of God, let us, let us settle this matter together. This is what happened. And this is how I felt. And to the anointed, the moment you receive that, don't say, don't, don't you know I'm anointed? I can say or do anything I want. No. You appreciate that the person at least came to you. You don't respond negatively. Remember, you must be responsible here. Is it difficult? Honestly, is it difficult that if someone has wronged you, you go to the person? This that you have done, I did not like it. Maybe if you had done it this way. Remember, you are also speaking in a way that you want to build. We are not saying, don't think that because you are anointed, you can roll over my head. No. We are human beings, and God expects us to love one another. And God still expects you to still listen, even when this person that has wronged you is ministering. You are not going to look at this person and say, mm. He's talking to them, not me. Then why did you come here? You thought there was going to be a voice from above there speaking in balls of fire. That is why we need to respect one another. Look at that person next to you. Tell, tell him and tell her I respect you. And mean it. Don't just say it because the camera is looking at you. If we can learn to respect the anointing that is in the other person, we can be a better church. And remember I said, seated there, you are also anointed. There is an anointing in you. There are things that you do that I cannot do. It's, it's that anointing. It's, it's yours. And I need to respect that. I don't have to be jealous. I know I can't sing, but if I hear someone sing beautifully, I must admire that and say, what an anointing. And appreciate. I want to read a scripture as I close. I will close with this scripture. And I want to read it in the NLT. Book of James, chapter 3. I'm going to read the first 10 verses. Don't listen to the English, listen to the word of God. Let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder. Wherever the pilot desires, even so, the tongue is a little member in and boasts great things. See how great a forest, a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the cause of the nature. And it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. 
It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. 